Well, if only the entire world were as calm as this beautiful South Texas lake is today, but it's not. It's not. Unemployment everywhere, financial turmoil everywhere, concerns about the virus everywhere, concerns about education, concerns about the future, just concerns. And so my prayers are with you today. May the Lord calm your spirit. We acknowledge that these are difficult days. My goodness, for many of you, they were difficult before these difficult days began. And now they're even more so. So may God give you strength. I'm just checking in, trying to bring a a little word of hope, a little word of encouragement. And I want to talk to you for just a moment about a very important question that needs to be asked during times of difficulty. And that question is simply this. What do you still have that no one can take? What do you still have that no one can take? I find that question in a great story in the Old Testament, the story of Joseph. Well, not the question itself, but the implication of the question. And I want to tell you why I think that question can help us get through tough times like these. You may not have any desire for someone to talk to you about that. I know, boy, we're all at different stages. So if that's you, God bless you. Be on your day. And if we can pray for you, we'll be glad to do so. Just early this morning, my wife and I prayed over yesterday's requests. And and I was reminded how difficult, how challenging this situation is for so many people. Many of you can relate to the story of Joseph in the Old Testament. I keep going back to it because I think it's a go-to story in the Bible that helps us understand how to get through difficult seasons. By the way, on May the 3rd, we begin a free online Bible study based on the story of Joseph in a book that I wrote called, You'll Get Through This, You'll Get Through This. Now, the online study has three components. So there's, there's the book, there's the study guide, and then there's the video. Now, the video is completely free, and you can really get a lot out of the study just by watching the video. That's great. And I'm a much younger version of myself in that video. But if you want to get the book and the study guide as well, what matters Find something to keep you engaged in God's Word. The story of Joseph, you'll recall, is a story of somebody who had everything taken away from them. Uh, Joseph had dreams. He he was a son of Jacob, one of 12 sons, and he had these dreams. He probably should have just kept his dreams to himself. But in the dreams, he, he was always the one in charge of the family. He was the one in charge of the family kind of peculiar dreams that involved moon and stars and and sheaves of wheat. But he always saw himself as in charge of the family. Well, he would tell his brothers that, and they didn't like it. Consequently, they sold him into slavery. And uh, Genesis chapter 37 and verse 28 says, His brothers sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites who took Joseph with them down to Egypt. Down to Egypt. Down, down, down to Egypt. Just a few hours ago, Joseph's life had been looking up. He thought that he was in charge of his family, that he had a great destiny. He had a wonderful future. He dreamed that his brothers and parents would look up to him. But what goes up must come down. And Joseph's life came down with a crash. Sold into slavery, spent time in prison. How did he get through that? How did he get through those difficult years? Uh, waking up in a land that was not his land, surrounded by people who didn't speak his language, who didn't look like him, yet he found himself surviving, not just surviving, but thriving. You know what happened. He ended up as prime minister of Egypt. What a story it is. How did he survive? Now, this is a good question because the scripture makes no reference to David's training, to his superior skills, to his talents, but... He had this idea, this, can we call it his destiny, that he was destined to somehow lead his family. And he held on to that. He he tattooed his destiny on the interior of his heart. And he believed that though people could take much, they could not take that. He believed that God had a call on his heart and he held on to it. And so I ask you, do you believe the same? Do you believe the same? What do you have that no one can take? 
What do you have that no one can take? Can I answer that question? Listen, you have a destiny. Here is your destiny. I know there are some details to it that I don't know, but I know this for every human being. You are God's child. You are called to be God's child. Before you were Asian or black or Caucasian or Hispanic, before you were strong or smart or witty or beautiful, before you had any characteristics, you were God's child. He chose you. Look at this passage from John chapter 15 and verse 16. You did not choose me. I chose you. He chose you. The choice wasn't obligatory, wasn't required, wasn't forced, wasn't compulsory. He saw you and He chose you. He laid His hands on you and said, This child is mine. You are God's child. That's your destiny. Your destiny is to be a child of the only true God, to be filled with this Holy Spirit, and to come to see Him face to face. Because that's the second part of your destiny. You are God's child forever forever. Don't you believe the lie of the hyphen between the dates? Your life is more than just a birth date and a death date. You're going to be in the presence of God forever. I'm looking in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. When this tent we live in, our body here on earth is torn down, God will have a house in heaven for us to live in, a home He Himself has made which will last forever. Don't get sucked into short-term thinking. Your struggles will not last forever, but you will. Your struggles will not last forever, but you will. God will have His Garden of Eden. He will. His will will be done. He will have His Garden of Eden, and all His Adams and all His Eves will share in His likeness, in His love, at peace with each other, at peace with animals, at peace with nature. He will rule over lands. He will rule over the cities. He will have a new kingdom, a new kingdom. And in some way, we will rule with Him. 2 Timothy 2.12 says, If we endure, we shall also reign with Him. I'm sure looking forward to that day, aren't you? Listen, you are God's child. You are God's child. And you are God's child forever. That is your destiny. That is your destiny. Now, many people reject that destiny. For one reason or another, they just reject that destiny. Don't be among them. Don't be among them. And if you're just now hearing, this is your destiny. Oh, my goodness. Can I encourage you? Say yes to your destiny. Say yes to God. You just find a quiet corner, get down on your knees and say, Lord God Almighty, I accept this wonderful destiny, this dream that you have for my life, that I am your child and I'll be with you forever. Bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, secure and protected by Him and indwelled by the power of the Holy Spirit. Folks, that is your destiny. You are God's child and you are God's child forever. That is the one thing no one can take.